This morning, CNN cameras captured the glimpse of one of those individuals, Carlos de Oliveira, the man federal prosecutors say schemed with Mr. Trump and Walt Nada to shield evidence from federal investigators. The Mar-a-Lago property manager made his first appearance inside a federal court, and we're going to start there in South Florida, where CNN's Randy Kay is posted. So what did we see this morning, Randy? Well, Dana, this was our first look at Carlos de Oliveira as he entered into the court house here uh, just behind me. He was wearing a navy blue suit and a tie. He went inside with his lawyer, John Irving, who was here from Washington, D.C. Uh, when he stood at the lectern to address the judge, he said good morning, and then the judge proceeded to lay out the charges uh, that he is facing. He said he's right now. Uh, he was also asked, Dan, about a passport. He says that he, do he said he does have a U.S. passport, but it's expired. Still, the judge told him that he had to turn that over within 48 hours. He was also told he can't leave South Florida. Uh, without permission, the area of South Florida. And then uh, he was also given a witness list uh, of the list of government witnesses, and uh, he was informed that he cannot uh, speak to any of those witnesses that are on that, uh, that have been identified as, the, uh, as witnesses for the government. I can tell you he did not enter a plea. Uh, that will take place on August 10th. There is going to be uh, an actual arraignment on August 10th in Fort Pierce, Florida. He did not have a Florida barred attorney, which means uh, he couldn't enter a plea. He needs somebody who can practice law in the state of Florida to do that. So that will happen on August 10th. And of course, uh, Dan, all eyes are watching this because, as we know, his case is now pushed back. His arraignment is pushed back, which could impact uh, Donald Trump's case uh, when it comes to the Mar-a-Lago documents. And that we, of course, want to see whether or not he would go to trial uh, before Election Day. That's certainly something a lot of people are watching, Dana. Randy, thank you so much. Not having an attorney present, delaying things, sure. that sounds pretty familiar at this point uh, uh, in terms of tactics. For more on the legal implications of all these developments, let's bring in former state and federal prosecutor David Weinstein. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I want to go back to the classified documents case. We know that uh, Carlos de Oliveira has just left court. Um, they could not do a full arraignment because he doesn't have a Florida attorney yet, but he's been told not to speak with uh, some of the other witnesses that are in the case, which did not at this point include Donald Trump uh, and Walt Nada, who are both defendants. Does that seem odd to you? Not at all, Sarah. Uh, in all of these cases, it's very difficult for the government to prevent you from speaking to one of your co-defendants. It's essential, especially if you have a joint defense, either agreement or theory of defense for a defendant to be able, at least through his lawyers, to speak to his co-defendants. Not unusual that they don't want any of them talking to witnesses who have been listed or revealed, but not so unusual that that doesn't include the other co-defendants. You just mentioned something that I think a lot of people are looking at, where Donald Trump's organization, or Donald Trump, is paying for the attorneys so far for Walt Nada and Carlos de Oliveira. Is there a real danger in here for those two defendants um, that they won't get proper counsel? I think there is, and I'm surprised at this juncture. Certainly, I know that they inquired of Walt Nada at an earlier hearing, and once Mr. De Oliveira gets permanent counsel, they'll inquire of him as well, and that's the court. Whether or not he understands that if a lawyer is provided for him, that that lawyer's loyalty should be to him mm -hmm. and not to the people who are providing the lawyer to him. And that's an important thing for the judge to get into. And I wouldn't be surprised if the government didn't press it a little bit more, especially with Mr. De Oliveira. We heard uh, that employee number four, um, who is Mr. Tavares, um, is not facing charges, but it is potentially what he said uh, about Carlos De Oliveira that got, that turn that into an indictment. Does that give you an indication that Tavares is perhaps cooperating with the prosecution? Oh, it certainly seems that way to me, Sarah. I think that they sent him a target letter, or at least that's been what's reported. They sat down with gave them what they believe is truthful testimony, and they've either given him immunity for the statements he's providing to them, or at some point down the road, they're going to ask him to plead guilty to some charges. But based on what's contained in the indictment, it would appear that he is, although listed by them initially as a target, perhaps moving his way towards a witness for them in this matter. So conversely,
could that mean that Carlos de Oliveira was contacted and did not cooperate um, because he is now facing uh, numerous charges? Well, th that seems that way to me as well. I think if they were going to give a target letter to the other witness, they've certainly given a target letter to D. Oliveira. And what happens is you get the letter, you engage counsel or not, you have conversations with the government, and here he did because there were some statements they believe he made were false. And then you're given a choice. You can either come on board and cooperate with the government and accept an offer that's on the table. And if you don't, at some point, they're going to say, well, we're going to indict you, and that's what happened last week. They reached that point where no offer was accepted, and then he got indicted. I have a question for you as, as a former prosecutor. You know, we, we see Donald Trump defending himself on his social media account. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Some of the things that you have seen him put out there, angry tweets about their so, truth socials, excuse me, about all sorts of things, including those who are trying this case. Uh, not at all. That's, he's his own worst enemy. I mean, quite frankly, the best thing that any client of mine should do is to be quiet, not make any public statements. If they want to say something, say it to me, and then I'll talk to you about it. But He's really shot himself in the foot here, and you can see that in the superseding indictment. They added another count related to the document that was shown at Bedminster that he had said there were no documents, there were no papers. He's publicizing his defense. He's attacking the prosecution. I'm surprised that at some point a judge doesn't issue a gag order mm. to keep him quiet. We've seen that in other cases. And if you're not quiet, you stand the real possibility of being held in contempt. Yeah, what, what has worked for him politically, clearly the polling shows, may not work for him so well legally is what you're saying. David Weinstein, thank you so much for your analysis. Appreciate it. Join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.